Validity. Many factors affect validity, and this includes reliability too because a test or task cannot measure what it actually intends to unless the methods are consistent. Objectivity also affects validity in the sense that if a researcher is subjective in their handling and specifically interpretation of data, their findings will not properly reflect the intended measure. There are different types of validity that are important, this includes face validity, which is essentially the measure of the procedure and how it appears, a test or task must seem to test what it is actually supposed to. Consider a test of helping behavior that involved offering to assist people who were stuck in a bathtub full of spiders or lizards. It might not be a valid test of helping because people who were frightened of spiders or lizards would not help, even though they might otherwise be of altruistic nature, selflessly helping. This would be deemed a lack of face validity. If participants start to think that they understand the aim of the study, their behavior patterns and characteristics are very likely to be affected by what we call social desirability and demand characteristics, this obviously lowers validity. When designing a study, the researcher should aim to minimize demand characteristics that does not make apparent or indicative to the participants how they are expected to behave. For example, in the study conducted by Leni et al., which was based on false memories, the researcher needed to hide the aim of the study which he she did by using several mock-slash-filler questionnaires alongside actual ones, food history inventory and restaurant questionnaire, that is the food preference questionnaire, food cost questionnaire and memory or belief questionnaire. They might try to remember a certain piece of information really well, or might not report it at all if that is what they think the researcher expects. Another problem of validity is whether if the researcher's findings are too specific to that own study, not being able to be applied to other situations. This lacks the general reach it was supposed to have, this means there is a lack of ecological validity. This type of validity explores if findings from the laboratory have a real-life application into the real world. For example, an experiment conducted on anxiety and panic attacks inside a laboratory and its findings may differ from that of real-life anxiety and panic attack experiences. However, it is also worth mentioning how a test of anxiety and panic attacks conducted at home may not accurately reflect the situational reality of people who have these experiences at work or even during healthcare procedures. If so, the finding of this test may not generalize beyond the situation tested. The task itself matters too. If in a task, participants are asked to do tasks that are similar to the ones in real-life contexts, then it has mundane realism, the degree of it being similar to events in real-life contexts. This is significant for a study to have as it would naturally have higher ecological validity if the tasks are realistic. For instance, in an experiment on emotions responses to dangerous animals such as bears, insects, bats or tigers can be used. As it is highly likely that a small number of people would have seen bears, tigers, a few more would have seen a bat but insects are more likely to have been seen by everybody in the participant sample, having higher mundane realism and thus higher ecological validity. This is a variant of external validity. External validity is basically referring to whether or not the findings of the study can be generalized beyond the present study. Get complete notes in PDF and book form from our Amazon store. Link given in description.